Hello everyone, this is Dean Pompilio, your subject matter expert for social engineering. In this demo, we're going to take a look at Multigo. This is the uh, version of Multigo that's for uh, Kali Linux, or you can also install Multigo on uh, Windows operating systems. Anyway, since we've been focusing mostly on using the, the uh, Kali environment, I figured I would show everyone this version of the tool called Carbon. You do have to register for the community edition so that you can log in and use their servers to do your your searches. So be aware of those those install steps. You can find that obviously on the website. Uh, Paterva.com is where you want to go. All right, so what this tool allows you to do is to visualize the relationships between different bits of information. And these could be lots of different things. Uh, Multigo calls them entities. It could be an email address or an IP address, a domain name or a, a, a DNS name. Any of those things could be, could be discovered about your target for a social engineering audit. And then once you've identified these entities, you can run what are called transforms. And the transforms can take many different um, shapes. It depends on what kind of entity it is. You get the, the transforms that are relevant for that type of object. All right, so let's, let's start out by creating a new graph. And it's called a graph because you're once you see the way the objects are connected, you get different lines and um, it's an edge graph, basically. The shortcut for doing that is uh, Control T. Or you can go to this icon here and click this for, to create another new graph. Either way, I like using shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, save a lot of time. Okay, so let's let's assume at this point in your social engineering audit that you at least have the name of of the of a particular target. Maybe this person is someone that works at an organization or or they know someone who works there. And you're trying to learn more about this this individual to see perhaps if they have uh several different email addresses, what kinds of social networking sites they might be using. These are all details that are that are definitely useful. All right, so we're going to start with a domain and entity. We'll drag that out. By default, it goes to the uh, Paterva.com website. We can simply double click this and put in something else like Facebook. So if you're trying to research a uh, an individual. Uh, maybe for a spear phishing campaign, that could be another good reason. You definitely could uh, do worse than just start with something like Facebook. Uh, you can also use Twitter. As we, if you see down here, there's a social network section in the interface, and there are some specific Facebook uh, entities. We're just going to use the uh, domain for right now, though. Okay, so what we want to do now is try our first set of transforms. We can right click on the object and there's a run transforms menu. And what we want to do is DNS from domain. And you can see there's quite a few transforms within this group. You can go to the bottom and run all the transforms, which is uh, what we're going to do for a lot of these examples. But you might want to go back later and run individual ones as, as you see fit. So as this runs, I'm getting a list of domains that are related to Facebook.com, subdomains basically, or um, a different um, high-level domains. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. So I'm going to scroll out a little bit so this fits better. But you can see we've got a pretty nice selection of different Facebook domains. Some of these might not be relevant for the person we're searching for. So if that's the case, if you don't, for instance, think that the uh, 
targets involved in uh, development. Maybe you can delete a couple of these. And we see we've got some name servers that show up. Looks like NS1 might be a name server, possibly. Okay, so we've got a um, collection of domains now. And this particular target uh, probably has some email addresses associated with Facebook.com. So that's what we want to figure out next. So uh, I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm going to select all these domains. Now what I want to do is resolve all these two IP addresses. Oops. All right, so resolve to IP. Uh, the menu can be a little bit confusing to navigate. As you can see, it's easy to um, accidentally pop one of the submenus out. So just click off to the side and try again if that happens. So resolve to IP is what we want. I'm going to run all those. And you can see the updates in the window below here as these transforms are running on those, those uh, domains. Also, uh, some other things about the interface. As you can see, we've got a detailed view on the side here. And this will show whatever is currently selected or whatever you're pointing to. And different entities have different uh, types of details. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of IP addresses associated with these particular Facebook domains. And what we can do now is look to see possibly what other DNS names are associated with these particular IPs. So I'm going to zoom out so I can see them all. So DNS from IP, I'm going to go ahead and run all the transforms there. And the reason you're, that, I'm, that I might be digging in this deeply, uh, just looking for an individual, is to correlate different types of uh, domains, different types of IP addresses, different email accounts. All these things might be related to the results from uh, these, these transforms. All right, so if we look at a particular IP address, we can see that there are quite a few Facebook domains here, but there's also some domains that don't appear to be related to Facebook. In either case, we can see the IPs they're associated. So let's look at some different layouts uh, to give you a little bit more of an idea of how the information can be visualized. If you zoom out far enough, you can see we go to a uh, what's called a bubble view. And it's color coded so you can select uh, you know, large amounts of objects easily with the mouse. Or, you know, by holding down shift, you can multi select. But if you're zoomed in to what's called the main view, you can click the bubble view manually and you get some different options. So the, the view we were looking at originally was the block view. So this layout mode puts everything in blocks and it might be useful for certain kinds of sorting of information. Or you can go to hierarchical mode which tries to organize the information slightly different method known as a hierarchy. So I was trying to get zoomed in here. And again, this might be useful for sorting the information. Uh, there's also a circular view showing uh, kind of a hub and spoke idea for relationships between objects. Then there's the organic mode 
uh, which can be really useful when you're trying to compare two different sets of objects to see which items they might have in common. And then you can also change the ball size. So the default is uh, diverse descent, which is kind of a ranking, or we can do something like the number of links will create a larger ball. Incoming links, larger balls that have more incoming links, or balls are larger that have outgoing links. All right, so that's a little introduction to the interface. So now that we've seen how we can look at the uh, information in different different formats, let's zoom out. And I want to select Facebook.com. And I want to run a transform. Email addresses from domain is what I'm looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and run all of the transforms on this. Looks like we're getting some updates down here. And some items are popping up. Oh, they're over here. There we go. So we've got a few that popped up. Um, we should get some more here in a moment. Okay, so we've, we've returned a bunch of email addresses. Keep in mind, these are just email addresses that uh, were, were found on this particular domain. It's not going to search all Facebook users for their email addresses. But for the purposes of our demonstration, this, this at least returns some usable, some usable names. Okay, so what we can do is uh, we, we know our target's name. We're gonna, we can search for all, or we can um, scroll down and search for different categories of information. So this is a nice way to, to do your filtering. Okay, so I found that that the uh, target of the social engineering audit is uh, does have a Facebook address. So what we can do now is run some transforms against the email address. There's quite a few choices here. And this might show whether the target has profiles on other social engineering or social uh, networking sites or whether they've got other email addresses associated uh, with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and run all the transforms. You get a warning that this might take a little while. Some of the transforms may error out, so you can just click those. All right, so a bunch of things were turned up here. We can see that there are several more email addresses, and it looks looks like um, each of these might have some some more connections. So this one looks promising. We can run a transform against an email address again. And you can see there's lots of different things here. Uh, you can try to cor correlate lots of other details about the individual. Okay, we got a whole bunch of information here. So you get the basic idea. The um, this email address has been linked to several others, and now if this if this was part of a social engineering um, attempt, like spear phishing, for instance, you would have a lot of different angles to approach the target from. Uh, there are lots of other uh, plugins that you can you can install into a tool like Multigo. Some of them you have to pay for, I believe. Uh, there are lots of free ones as well. So the tool has quite a few different uh, capabilities. You really could spend 
uh, many hours learning its various functions. But hopefully this light overview gives you an idea at least how to get to a point where you can expand your search for gathering information on your social engineering target. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Thank you.